Hi. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, as, um, as Matt said, thank you for that kind introduction. Um, my name is Daniel Chait, and I'm here to talk to you today about um, our approach at Greenhouse uh, to building this, uh, this inclusion product, Greenhouse Inclusion, and some of the lessons and uh, challenges that we face and some of the lessons learned in, in overcoming and, and addressing those challenges in building this quite interesting, um, interesting product. Uh, so I thought, here's uh, what I would like to cover. I'll give you a little bit of the kind of context and background about who I am and what, we, what we've built and why it matters to you all. Um, and then I'll just give a quick survey of some of the, I thought, interesting challenges that we faced in building this new product, and then how we've seek, uh, seen to sort of address some of those challenges. And then, of course, we'll have some time for questions. Okay, so a little bit about myself. Uh, again, my name is Daniel Chait. I'm the co-founder and CEO at a software company here in New York called Greenhouse. Uh, we make software that helps companies get better at hiring. So our sort of uh, core insight is that if you ask any leader, they'll tell you that people are our most important asset. You've probably all heard someone say that at a podium somewhere in a room that you've been in. And if you ask any great leader what their biggest challenges are, they'll also probably say something about people in hiring. Um, and so I thought if we could tackle this problem that was both the most important uh, to, to most organizations as well as probably the, the thing that most companies are the worst at, uh, that we could create a lot of value. And so we build a set of products um, all around kind of uh, hiring and, and recruiting process to help companies that are hiring really get better at a, a number of key things. Uh, first is helping to identify and attract the right talent. Second is to be able to deliver great experiences to those people so that they want to work at your organization. The third is helping companies make really smart decisions throughout the hiring process. And fourth is helping companies use data to identify opportunities to continuously improve. And those are kind of the new capabilities of winning hiring organizations. And so we build a set of products around those capabilities to help companies in a, you know, compete and win uh, for talent. We've been in business since 2012. We are venture backed. Um, and uh, we have office headquarters here in New York, with about 200 people and about 30 or 40 in uh, San Francisco area. We just opened a support office in Denver as well. Okay, so what am I here to talk to you about today? This new product we launched, Greenhouse Inclusion. And so if you think about our overall mission as helping companies get better at hiring, one of the things that's on everyone's mind and that's critical to being great at hiring is the idea of uh, tackling problems and, and issues around inclusiveness and diversity. It's something that you're all hearing about in the press. It's something that a lot of people have become aware of at companies, not only as a way to sort of stay out of trouble and stay out of the news, but proactively as a way to build better companies and, and to gain the benefits of a more diverse teams. And yet, I think what we've all seen is although people have finally kind of woken up to the need, uh, we really felt that um, the world was short on solutions. And so we sought to build as part of our overall product suite what is it that we think we can do as Greenhouse uniquely to help companies scale out their inclusive sort of hiring practices throughout the company in order to build kind of more diverse teams? And so we built this product. We just launched it. It's an early release, early access right now with a handful of customers and uh, very excited about it. Um, but it's not without its challenges. So um, I'm happy to get into more of like what the actual product does, uh, but I thought it would be interesting rather than doing like more of a product advertisement to you all, uh, would be to talk more about the ins and outs and sort of hows of how we, you know, how, to, how we sort of did it. And so why did I think that, that would be interesting for this particular group? Well, first, like we're dealing with lots of different kinds of data and, um, and addressing a broad, a broad range of, of issues in tackling in tackling diversity and inclusion. We're dealing with issues of psychology, issues of human behavior, issues of politics and culture. Um, and so this is less a like data and like modeling and finance kind of like talk. And it's more about like a lot of the broader issues that we faced and the impact of some of those issues on our customers. Good? Okay, so uh, really quickly, we faced three key challenges I'm gonna outline today. There were more, um, but three key challenges I'm gonna outline today in addressing it, uh, you know, in, in building this product and then how we address them. The first, this idea here of, um, you know, when you talk about data, like people are always talking about big data, in hiring and recruiting, you often don't have like classically think of as big data. You often do things one at a time. Um, and that presents its own set of challenges. Um, secondly, that the hiring process and the process of changing the makeup of your organization, it doesn't happen in milliseconds. It doesn't happen in hours. It happens over years. And so how can we build a product that helps you be more data-driven in your approach to hiring when the data plays out over a long period of time? And then lastly, of course, is that engaging into this space directly opens up the potential for controversy. People may not agree with what you're doing or how you're doing it. They may not understand it. And uh, you can run into trouble. So I thought those were interesting things to talk about here. And uh, let me share a little bit about how we address sort of each in, in order. We'll kind of go through one at a time. Hi, welcome. 
Um, okay, so first, uh, this idea that, hey, like we're dealing with small data, kind of not big data. Um, I'll give you three techniques that we developed to sort of a, a address this challenge. Uh, the first is that we thought, well, your data doesn't just have to be like all the rows and columns in your own database. There's lots of data out there in the world about sort of the effectiveness of different diversity practices, and we can draw upon that data from, for instance, university research or research that's been done in corporations. And so very early on, we partnered with uh, many outside parties. We partnered with, firstly, Paradigm, uh, who is a consultancy on diversity inclusion strategies and kind of the leader in that space, and he's worked with thousands of companies. We partnered with academic researchers from places like MIT and Stanford who've done studies on uh, everything from human psychology of decision making and the gender workplace issues to really understand like what does the data tell us that can be effective and that happens at companies. So there was a famous study at Yale around um, uh, the shifting criteria people use when they make decisions and the psychology of often people will uh, make a decision first and then back out of that the criteria that they used to arrive at that decision. And so there's techniques that were shown through that research to help overcome that, where you can get people first to commit to the criteria and then make decisions. So that made its way into our product. So we used lots of data that wasn't necessarily like our database data, but nonetheless helped inform the product. Secondly is that we really wanted to make sure that we were customer uh, validated. Um, so you know we wanted to, you know we recognize that we're one uh, particular organization with our own perspective, um, but we've got thousands of customers of all sizes um, who have already been working for a long time to tackle issues with diversity. Our customers, many of them are among the forefront of companies you know, making the most progress in this area, companies like Pinterest and Airbnb and Slack, who have very strong efforts around building more diverse workplaces and uh, fostering inclusiveness. And so we've been working with our early customers and using their data, using things that they've already shown to work and collected to help inform our product approach. Um, and then lastly is we thought we also have an opportunity to help our customers to collect and present new kinds of data. Uh, so you know, in, our, in this field, one of the challenges can just be having the data in the first place is often seen as risky or difficult to collect. Um, and secondly is that most companies don't collect a whole lot of uh, you know, data around their recruiting process at all. But for example, in Greenhouse Inclusion, we realize that we can send out candidate satisfaction surveys to candidates after they're done interviewing at our customers and present a new data set to our customers that correlates that with the demographics of their interviewers, of their candidates and prospects to identify areas where they may be less inclusive behavior leading to worse outcomes in hiring and help them overcome that. Um, so by merging things like uh, source data, where candidates come from, um, candidate satisfaction data, interview performance data, we're able to provide kind of new information through this product that our customers can use to identify uh, challenges. Okay, so secondly, I talked about this idea that, you know, hey, this is a process that takes place over many, many years. And so, you know, we kind of racked our brains like, ah, how can you be more data driven in a building inclusive hiring practices when this, you may not have like the end result you're looking for for quite some time. Uh, and so we thought a couple of techniques that we developed or strategies that we developed to try to tackle that problem. First is that we wanted to make sure that we, that we had lots of visibility about the effort itself to all the stakeholders. At Greenhouse, we like to say that hiring is a team sport where most of the team doesn't know how to play the game, right? Great hiring isn't done just within the recruiting team. Great hiring is done at every corner of the organization. Your you know, engineers are doing interviews. Your managers are going to meetups like this and meeting talented people and referring them in. You're sharing jobs on social media. Of course, everyone's gathering around to make decisions about who to hire. And so we wanna make sure that all those people know what's happening in the hiring process to make the process itself more inclusive. And so actually one of the research-driven ideas that we put in was this idea of nudges, of giving people in the moment um, opportunities to remind them of how, you know, how they're acting and, and what they could be uh, keeping in mind. And so we came up with this idea of in the moment nudges. I would say like, this is an example of uh, an inclusion nudge when someone is writing a job post. Just a little reminder right there that says, hey, remember, this is something our company is working on, it's important to us. And as you're writing this job post, keep in mind that the language you use in that job post can impact the quality and makeup of the candidates that we attract, right? And so that's kind of a real-time thing that helps drive progress. Um, the second strategy that we developed to tackle this issue is the idea of providing leading indicators. So although we don't know the final makeup of your employee base for many years to come, we can say, well, what are the things that ought to be happening along the way if you're gonna get to that outcome? And let's find those leading indicators and surface them early. And so part of what the product was built to do was to have all these different interactions that are happening throughout the company take inclusiveness more into mind. 
And so one of the leading indicators that we developed and we, and we put up into this dashboard that you see here is the idea of like what interactions are happening throughout your organization that can impact the makeup of the hiring pool that you're attracting and through sourcing and reviewing applications and then through interviewing and then candidate roundups. There's all these touch points that are happening and we're literally looking at what are the leading indicators or how many times are those things happening as a way to just show people along the way that like progress is being made, you know, and kind of keep doing the right thing and you'll get to the right endpoint when, uh, when it all happens. So that was a really effective strategy for us as well. And lastly, and of course this is the big one, is anytime you step into a field that has potential controversy, you have to be really thoughtful about your approach. Um, as much as, you know, if you spend time in uh, New York and San Francisco, you may think that, hey, everybody believes in diversity and, you know, uh, the, the, the things that we ought to be doing ought to be, you know, obvious and easy agreed upon. It's a big world out there and, you know, there's a lot of sensitivity. Um, and so we thought we needed a few strategies here to help us, you know, you know s survive and, and thrive in this world. So the first is um, that we partnered with many outside experts. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we brought in academic researchers, we brought in uh, consultants and practitioners um, so that we knew that the things we were doing had been proven and validated with real research. Um, you know, we didn't want, you know, in, in our normal product, we make product decisions every day. Uh, and those product decisions may or may not have a lot of impact on the customers, but they're not subject to as much you know, analysis and rigor. But here we knew that the decisions that we made in this product would be subject to like lots of uh, you know, insight, critique and, 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 and um, we needed to make sure that, that they were done in a thoughtful way. The second is that the data that we do collect, things like demographic information, race and gender makeup of your candidate pool, that we had to provide very careful access controls. I don't think that'll be a surprise to anyone here, but you, know, you can't just very well ask a candidate you know, a bunch of sensitive information about their personal background and then show it to everyone inside the organization. So we have very tight controls over who, who can access the data, what they can do with the data, and the fact that people have you know, a legitimate need to be able to use and access the data uh, when, they, when they can get to it. The third is that we consciously chose, no pun intended, uh, to limit the scope of the product around solving issues of unconscious bias. There's many issues that affect diversity and inclusive hiring, but we thought areas particularly around unconscious bias were areas where there's lots of science, there's lots of, um, there's lots of validated approaches to solving it, and where it was potentially less controversial. So there are other areas uh, of kind of diversity and, and diversity hiring that others have done, which can be very successful, um, but which maybe are more sensitive or people have different views on. So for example, if you've ever heard of the Rooney Rule, uh, anyone may know what that is, but uh, this was a rule in the NFL when they were hiring head coaches that said that in order to um, offer a job to a head coach in the NFL, that they had to ensure that at least one of the candidates in the final slate was from an underrepresented background to ensure diversity. But that's a controversial topic to, to many people, and so specific sort of things like that um, we haven't tackled yet. Um, some customers may not agree with it, um, and in, in any event, we think we're doing things that are more effective in the short term. Um, and then lastly, is that we want to make sure that we can help our customers to, I see, a, am I, are you guys seeing that pointer around there? There we go. Why am I not? There we go. Helping our, our customers to present this information with context. Um, so we thought if we're just collecting this information and throwing it in a report like every other, then our customers may not be well positioned to make sense of the data or to protect themselves from potential controversy. And so we want to help our own customers be successful in, in attacking these issues. And so in addition to just a bunch of software, we've provided our customers with uh, kind of like a whole rollout toolkit so that they can address these topics holistically with, within their organization. So like when you choose to roll out an inclusiveness program in your company, what's the email that should get sent out from say the CEO to the all company letting them know you're doing it? What's the presentation or what are this information that you're gonna share with the company at your all hands every quarter? What are the conversations that you're having in kind of like employment uh, decision roundups? All that content is content that we're creating and providing to our customers as a part of this product as a way to help um, sort of allay some of the controversy and make sure that people are, are having constructive conversations around this area. And we thought if we just gave them data without the context behind the data, that that would open them up and, our, and by extension ourselves up to, to potential problems. Um, so hopefully you found that interesting. Those are some of the challenges that we faced and some of the solutions um, that we developed to them. Uh, love to have a ch uh, chance to sit in this nice chair and answer a few questions. Thank you. Wonderful, super interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, 
So actually tell us about the product since you kindly focus on the issues uh, as opposed to the offering that solves the issues. Um, I would love to learn sure. more. So, you know, the thing that we thought when we were building Greenhouse Inclusion was like, what is it that we think we can add uniquely to this conversation? Because there's already a whole bunch of solutions around diversity, around inclusion, um, both technologies and, 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 and other types of solutions, consultants and training and so forth. Um, the thing that we thought we could do uniquely is, you know, our customers use Greenhouse as the access point for all their hiring activity. Like anytime someone does something around hiring, we have their attention. And so the thing that we thought we could do you know, better than anyone was we could use that attention you know, kind of productively. So that's where these idea of like nudges comes into play, where when you're going to interview someone, you're, you're looking at a greenhouse. You know, when you're going to create a job description that posts on your website, you're looking at greenhouse, all these areas. Um, the other thing is that because we control the sort of overall workflow and data from the moment you're advertising a job on the web, and then the candidate data gets collected all the way through the hiring process and then ultimately getting offered and then to onboarding, we have the ability to like bring new data to the table. So that was where the idea of like when you're creating the job post, you ought to be able to safely collect demographic information and then safely use that demographic information to identify where you may have issues. You know, one of the insights that we had from the research was that most people sort of offhandedly perceive diversity is a top of funnel problem. They say, oh, there's not enough women engineers out there. Well, it turns out that's not necessarily always the case. Often people have plenty of, uh, of well-represented candidates coming into the top of the funnel, but the issue may be elsewhere. They may in fact have a problem in their interviewing uh, funnel or in certain stages of the offer. And so without being able to collect that information and analyze it appropriately, you'll often, even if you're trying to tackle the problem, even if you're willing to put effort into it, if you're not aware of where the problem is, you won't be able to target effectively. So it's all about kind of like shaping people's behavior, helping them collect information, and then target their own solutions in the right way. Do you offer that type of analytics outside of DNI as well? Is that, is that part of the product? Yeah, so a big part of Greenhouse generally is that customers will collect lots of information about the hiring process and then use that to like either make better decisions in the moment about which candidates to, to go forward with, or overall at their process. Like, how's the process going? Oh, what trends are getting better or worse? You know, where are we, say, spending money on candidates that are uh, you know, not productive versus spending money on candidates that are, you know, that are making their way through the funnel? Uh, which of our interviewers uh, always say yes? Which of our interviewers always say no? And how do we sort of calibrate the interview process? So there's lots of kind of data collection that we provide in, overall in the, in the product because um, you know, hiring is one of the, you know, super impactful. Every time you make a hire, you're basically placing a six-figure annual bet on that person. And I can't think of another place in any organization where you make as big of a decision with as much financial impact, with as little information as when most companies hire someone. They have a data sheet on like this table when they buy it. But often they hire people based on kind of like gut feel and, ah, he seemed like a good guy, went to the right college. So we try to bring a data perspective there. Very good. All right. Uh, do we have questions? One over there. Many. Hi. Um, I'm interested in hearing sort of how you define diversity for each of the clients that you're working with, or what you give targets, and how you measure sort of progress towards those targets. That's a great question. So we, we don't uh, take a position on that ourselves. So we provide effectively like the tools uh, for our customers to do that. So they can define the dimensions of, you know, demographic dimensions that they want to collect and analyze. And, you know, we sort of uh, enable them to do that. But Greenhouse, and, and by the way, if you're familiar with the product, you'll see this as a common thread. Like we take a position on structured hiring, that you should have a hiring process. You should ask every candidate for a job, you know, the same questions in the same order and give the ability to compare apples to apples. What questions you ask, that's for the customer to decide. So similarly in Greenhouse Inclusion, like we don't take a view on some question like that where it's like more up to the company what areas of concern they have or what issues they're trying to tackle or improve. What I would say is, you know, we, have, we launched a product in partnership with Paradigm, who is an expert in this field and who does consult and, 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 and provide strategy and advice. And so some of the content in the product, where you saw like that nudge, for example, that's an area where we've worked with an expert specifically to get that language uh, right. And there's research that can show us this language is right, not that language. So there are certain areas where we've made sure that the specific point of view that we're taking is, is kind of research backed. But if there isn't that, then we sort of leave it to the company to, to set their targets. Okay. Oh. 
could have put some new people out. So you said you do development stuff. Obviously, diversity is, is desirable at the society level. But we always touch you find that that's part of the impact on the business, that you need more diverse and better results. Did you have convincing you that it's the case? And the second part is you as far as you been to uh, you said that you need to that your product matches the the candidate with the uh, best fit. No, with the the best for the best fit. So would you adjust that to account for um, a minority, so to speak, because if you lower the threshold to that it Sure. So thank you for asking. Uh, to the first question, yes, there's tons of validated research that shows that diverse teams and diverse organizations perform better in a wide range of, of, of measures, right? They uh, make uh, more creative decisions. Uh, they make more resilient decisions. Uh, the, you know, there's studies that show uh, companies with women in the boardroom uh, outperform. So there's, there is a lot of validated science that, that, that underlies the belief, I think, that many of us have that that's, that that's not just um, a, a problem to be overcome, but actually a, a good that, that they're addressing um, and, and trying to accomplish. So thank you for asking that question. Uh, the other half was more around, so uh, again, Greenhouse as a platform is not in the business of like, um, assigning which candidates fit for which job, that's the company's approach. But I think the point that you're making is, uh, you know, is, is worth discussing. I think what our customers are trying to do is what they're viewing is like, there's unconscious bias in all of us, right? So whether we're a good person or a bad person isn't the point. This is the hardwired to how our brain works. If I show you an optical illusion, you know, you're gonna see the crooked lines, you're gonna see the, you know, the lady or the old man. That's just your brain. Um, and so what are the things, and so that can filter into your decision making, right? I can do you a quick thought experiment for everyone in the room, like uh, picture a genius, okay? So how many of you pictured Albert Einstein? Right, so if you're hiring for a job where genius or brilliance or something is the, you're probably more likely to think of a man. And so there are like lots of um, ways that our brain and kind of our decision making can fail us and lead us to making worse decisions, less objective decisions. And so our perspective is by removing that bias, by helping you make those less of those kind of errors, right, to correct for some of those errors that we all make, both as individuals and as groups, we're gonna help our company, our customers, to make more objective and therefore better decisions um, and to achieve diversity as, a, as an outcome of that, if that makes sense. Thank you. One, one more. Can we also talk about your greenhouse socks? So if you had come to Greenhouse Open, you'd see everyone got a pair of greenhouse socks. They come in three flavors, <laughs> striped, polka dot, and solid teal. Very, very Thank nice. Thank you for the call out. And with uh, one more, yes. That's a great, so the question for those that may not have been able to hear is how is, you know, sounds like a great product. How did you come to the pricing model and, and, and go to market strategy? So we're actually, it's in early access right now and that's one of the things that we're still finalizing. So very top of mind question for me. Uh, <coughs> and I think, you know, the thing that we're trying to figure out is like, there's a lot of companies that value diversity, right? Um, it's, it's less sort of standard how they resource that. And so we're finding that there are companies who um, have robust uh, DNI and uh, practices. They may have a head of DNI, and um, but that person is generally not in the business of buying software. Um, there are other places where you know there's like uh, you know um, not such a robust DNI practice, but where they may have like um, you know um, operations people or talent operations people who have like a set of categories that they buy, and this may not be one of them. So there's a bunch of challenges here to overcome within the organization. Uh, you know, to get them to like understand the opportunity and is this the good investment for them to be making. And so one of the things that we've done in our early access program and remains to be seen whether it's successful or, or where it leads is, you know, we try to connect early on in, the, in, the, in accepting a customer with their executive sponsor. And our kind of view is like, if you're gonna tackle this type of issue, like buying the product is the first step or a step in that journey. It's definitely not set it and forget it. This is not like um, a light switch, you know, you, you, you put a lamp on, the, on a table and turn it on. This is an active effort by the organization. And so if there's like an executive sponsor and there's an existing program of change and resources applied, then our product can be seen as a platform to plug into and try to bring that program to life. 
Um, and so then the way that that, pro that program is overall resourced is, is, is seen to be a factor. So it's a great question, and uh, if I get invited back next year, I'll maybe have a more specific answer. You will. Thanks. On this note, thank you so much. Really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot.